Hello, and welcome to episode 33 of Dark Academia Queen. Can't believe we're on episode 33. Hard to believe. Um, I do have a few announcements. I have started a new podcast called Tell in the Rabbit Hole, and I know it makes me like five already. <laughs> five, six already. But one of them's coming to slowly coming to an end in the next season, so... But yeah... I don't know if I continue that one. I do love doing podcasts, even though I'm not really the best at them. But I also have, but you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. And you can also find, um, go check out my sister podcast, um, Dark Academia. Yeah. True Crime Lounge, Sassy Sun Bell, Just a Breezy Chat, um, and Down the Rabbit Hole. Yeah. So. You're probably wondering, how does Down the Rabbit Hole differ differ from Dark Academia Queen? Well, there are some topics that belong in Dark Academia, some topics that belong in Down the Rabbit Hole. But, without being said, please subscribe, hit that like button, and ring that bell for notifications to help a girl out. Um, Today, we are going to be talking about steampunk. So, we've probably seen, like, the steampunk pictures and everything. My favorite one is, um, have you seen Criminal Minds? Um, the episode where it's Reed and Garcia, they're coming, like, from going to, like, a comic con convention or something like that. And they run into Rossi, and he's like, I love you both, but it's too early to deal with you guys or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you should, <laughs> I think you, you should probably know what scene I'm talking about. Um, it was right after Garcia had broken up with Ke- Kevin and all of that because she didn't want to marry him. But anyway, what is steampunk? It's a subgenre of fiction that incorporates retro futuristic technology and aesthetics that are inspired by, but not limited to the 19th century industrial steam powered machinery. Steampunk works are often an alternative history of the Victorian era or the American Wild West. Where steam power remains a mainstream use or in the fantasy world that similarly employs steam power. Steampunk features um, anarch- and some anarchist technology and retrofuturistic inventions, as people from the 19th century might have a vision distinguishing from Neo-Victorianism and, likewise, rooted in the era's perspective, fashion, culture, architectural style, and art. Some such technologies may include fictional machineries, such as those found in H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, and other examples of steampunk contain alternative history style presentations as and such technologies as stream cannons, lighter than um, air um, ships, analog computers, and such digital mechanical um, computers as such as Torch Barbage Analytical Engine. It also may incorporate um, additional elements from the genres of fantasy, horror, historical fiction, alternative fiction, and other branches of speculative fiction, making it often a hybrid g- genre. My mind automatically went to the Vampire Diaries series and all of that when I said that hybrid. But anyway, as a form of speculative fiction, it explores alternative futures of past, but it can also address real-world social issues. The first known appearance um, of the term steampunk was in 1987, though it is now retroactively referred to um, as many works of fiction created as far back as the 1950s and earlier. A popular subgenre is the Japanese steampunk, which is consisting of uh, manga and anime. And for those of you who don't know, I love anime and manga. I know it shocks a lot of people when they first meet me because I do not look like that girl who loves it. But I do. Um, but, but it also refers to artistic style, clothing, fashions, subcultures that may have been from the aesthetics of steampunk fiction. Victorian era fashion, art nouveau design, and films from the mid 20th century. Various modern, um, Unit utilitarian objects may have mold modded by individuals and artists by a pursuit of Victorian mechanism caused steampunk style, and a number of visual and musical artists have been described as the steampunk. I think Adam Lambert is probably one of the best known examples 
Lambert, Gaga, for sure, I know. Futurama, if you really stop and think about it. Um, but steampunk is influenced often and adopts the style of 19th century scientific romance by Drills Vern, H.G.W. Wells, Mary Shelley, Edward S. Ellis, um, <laughs> and several more modern works of fiction, art and fiction, and significant in development of the genre that were produced before the genre had a name. Titus Alone is widely considered by scholars the first novel of the genre proper, while other po point to Michael Morick's um, 1971 novel, the, Warlock, uh, the Warlord of the Air, which is heavily influenced by Pete's work in the film Brazil, was um, an early cinematic um, influence, and although it can be considered a precursor to steampunk offshoot, from the offshoot diesel punk, the Adventures of Luther Arquart, right, was a precursor um, as well. As well. In fine arts, Romilio Vero's painters combined elements of the Victorian dress fantasy, techno fantasy imagery, and the television, one of the earliest manifestations of the steampunk ethos, was in mainstream media and the Wild West, which inspired later films. The later film. And although many now consider sim are now consider similar, the genre was established in the 1960s and in the 1970s. Um, it also coined the term steampunk, originated largely in the 80s in a large and, and as a tongue and check variant of cyberpunk. And for um, works for Tim Powers, James Blaylock, um, and himself. The, and although it took place in the 19th century, setting and imitated conventions of such actual Victorian speculator, fiction of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Now, the section possibly contains the original research. Please improve it by p p verifying. So, anyway. So, while Joder... Uh, while Jesus more like night in the internal devices, um, the Anubis gates and the Blaylock swords in the first novels of his neologic logism would be applied. The three authors gave the term thought at the time. They were far from the first modern science fiction writers to speculate on the development of the steam based technology of alternate history. Keith Linner. Um, Keith Leonard um, and one, Ronald W. Clark's apply modern speculation to the past age technology in society. Harry Harrison, a novel, um, novels, a transatlantic tunnel, hurrah, portrays Britain as the alternative 1973 full atomic locomotives, coal power flying boats, ornate submarines, and Victorian dialogue. The first use of the word steampunk in the title was Paul D. Flippio. Flippio. Filippo. Sorry. Flippio was just more fun to say. Anyway, Paul D. Filippo in 1995's steampunk trilogy. To, um, hmm. With three short novels, Victoria, Hot Knots, and Walt and Emily, which respectively imagined the replacement of Queen Victoria by a human nuke clone as an invasion uh, by Massachusetts by loves, crafty, and monsters, as such an affair between Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson. That sounds like the original Wattpad fan fiction right there. Sorry, it does. Does anybody, like, still use Wattpad? I know the after series was based on Wattpad and stuff, but still. Um, but. The Japanese steampunk consists of steampunk manga comics and anime productions from Japan. These elements have consistently appeared on mainstream manga since the 40s, dating back to Osama Taxi's epic science fiction trilogy consisting of The Lost World, Metropolitan, and The Next World. 
The elements found in manga eventually made their way to mainstream anime productions in the 70s, including television shows like Leji Montesomo, um, Space Space Battleship Yamato, and 1979's anime adaptations of Rikyoka, Ignata Magna Rosa Vasalis. It influenced 19th century European authors such as Jules Verne um, as well. The most influential steampunk um, animator was Hayao Miyazaki, who was creating steampunk anime since the 70s, starting with the television show Future Boy Conan and his manga Nasasaki in the Valley of the Wind in his 1984 anime film adaptation. Um, also contains steampunk elements as well. So, but the success of this uh, was to create the first production, Nadia, The Secret of the Blue Water. And, based, and it was based on the concept by him, and Nadia was an influential on the later steampunk anime, such as um, Kashiro's anime, um, anime film, Steam Boy, and Disney's anime steampunk film, Atlantis, The Lost Empower, which was influenced by anime, particularly the works of possibly Nadia. So, other Japanese steampunk works would um, include um, Studio Ghibli's anime film, House Moving Castle, and so Sega's film, the anime franchise Secure Wars, which is set in the steampunk version of the Mija Tashi era as well. Now, relationship. Now, what about the help? What about relationships to retrofusion and DIY craft making? A great example of this is going to be the Truth Cafe, Truth Coffee, a steampunk cafe in Cape Town. And it used to be confused. Steampunk used to be confused with retrofuturism, but they both have sensibilities that call the older but still modern eras in which technological technological change seem to anticipate a better change. And one remembered as a relatively innocent as industrial decline. Now, one of steampunk's most influent, significant contributions is the way it, in which it mixes digital media and traditional handmade forms. As scholar Rachel Bowser and Brian Coxwell put it, the tinkering and the technology of steampunk invite us all to roll up our sleeves. This is also seen in a lot of art and media as well. Many visualizations of steampunk have their origins um, with um, the among um, others like Walt Disney, for example. Um, it's seen in League Under the Stars and including design of the submarine, Natalia's and the interiors and the crew's underwater gear, George Powell's film, The Time Machine, um, and this theme also carried over to Six Flags Mountain in Disney parks. In the theme of the steampunk um, district or Six Flags Mountain in the design of the mysterious island section. But in aspects of the steampunk design emphasize a value in between the form and the function. It is like the arts and craft movement, but John Ruskin, um, William Morris, and the other reformers of the late 19th century rejected the machines in industrial production. In contrast, steampunk enthusiasts present a non-ludite critique of technology. Various modern um, utilitarians have uh, been modified by enth enthusiasts in a pseudo-Victorian me mechanism steampunk style. And examples would include computer keyboards and electric guitars, and the goal of such re redesigns is to employ the appropriate material and which is designed in a craftsmanship cons consistent with the Victorian era, which has rejected the aesthetic by the industrial design. The Paris Station Arts and Materials was designed in 1994 in honor to the works of Jules Verne. In 1994, the Paris Metro Station um, was redesigned as by Belgium artist Francois Trutin in the steampunk style. Now, the Arctic Kinetic Steam Works brought such um, brought works from the engine of Burning Man Festival in 2006 
in 2007, and the group's founding members, Sean Orlando, created a steampunk treehouse. I actually want to see that now. The content has been displayed in numbers at a number of festivals, and the steampunk tree has house is permanently installed by Dogfish Head Bre Brewery in Melton, Delaware. The Netherworld Hall is a three-story, self-propelled mobile art mobile built by to resemble a Victorian house on wheels. It was designed by Shannon O'Hare and it was built by volunteers in 2006 and presented at the Burning Man Festival from 2006 to 2015. So, when fully built, the hall repelled itself at the top speed of 5 miles per hour and required a crew of people to operate safely. Currently, the Never Was Hall makes a home in the Autanium Works in the car factory in Vallejo, California. It is owned by O'Hare and several other staff contraptionists. Now, in May to June 2008, a multimedia artist and sculptor, Paul St. George, exhibited an outdoors interactive installation linking London to Brooklyn in a Victorian era style telescope, util utilizing, utilizing this device. The New Yorker promoter Evelyn Crete organized a transatlantic way from steampunk enthusiasts in both cities prior to Whiteman's shift around the world in a day steampunk theme event. Now, in 2009, um, for Questacon, Tim Retro created a large wall piece that presented a concept for um, the Clockwork Universe. And the still artwork contains um, moving gears such as a working clock, a movie of the moon's term terminated in action, the 3D moon that was created by Anthony Williams, and steampunk has become a popular descriptor for homemade objects sold on the craft network Etsy and, on Etsy, and there have been many objects and fashions would bear little resemblance in earlier established descriptions of steampunk. Thus, the craft created networks of not that may strike a service as significantly, sufficiently steampunk to warrant the use of the terms. So, Comedian April Winchell um, catalogued some of the most erroneous and humorous examples of the, her website. Now, from October 2009 to February 2010, the Museum of History and Science in Oxford um, hosted the first major exhibition of steampunk art, art objects curated by a developer in New York um, as well. In November 2010, the library, the li the library steampunk art exhibit was opened by Damien um, McInara in Amaru, New Zealand, and was created by a paper a paper mache to resemble a large cave and filled in industrial equipment from yesteryears, um, ray guns, and general steampunk corks. Its purpose is to provide uh, steampunkers in the region the display of artwork themselves. A year later, I'll read, see, my roommate's doll. A year later, um, a more permanent gallery um, <laughs> of Steampunk HQ was opened in a former Meeks and Games elevator. Now, what about the fashion? Well, steampunk fashion has no set guidelines, but tends to synthesize um, <laughs> but it tends to synthesize modern styles with influences from the Victorian era. Such may influences may include bustles, corset gowns, petticoats, suits, and waistcoats, and top hats. So, a few years ago, from, I went as a Circus keeper, um, not the circus, the ringleader or whatever from for Halloween, and I loved it. So, but steampunk influence outfits are usually assented with several techno technological and period accessories. Um, 
and modern accessories like cell phones and music players can be found in steampunk outfits as well. Postalyptic elements um, can include um, gas masks, drag clothing, tribal motifs, and also can be included. Now, you might recall this episode in Under the Gun, which is a reality show. Um, in episode 7, contestants were challenged for Offer God Steampunk Cheek, America's Next Top Model to Tackle Steampunk Fashion in 2012. Now, this can also be seen in literature. In 1988, the first version of the science fiction tabletop role-playing game Space 1989 was created. Well, 1889 was created. William Gibson and Bruce Sterling's novel The Difference Engine is often credited with bring with widespread awareness of awareness of steampunk as well. The comic book series Hellboy, which was also created in the two Hellboy films featuring Juan Perlman, which was directed by Giolormo del Toro. Um, all have steampunk elements um, as well. This is also set in an alternative world. Since the 90s, the application of steampunk label has expanded beyond the works of recognizable historical fit periods to, to works set in fantasy worlds. You're too cute for your own good, Reese Roo. Um, but fantasy steampunk settings can be on tabletops and notable. Examples in School of Skies, Arcavia, Rise of the Nations, Rise of Legends. Now, it's also seen in um, The Legend of Korra as well. Now, look, I'm going to say this once. Um, I hated The Legend of Korra. I am not going to lie to you guys. I loved Avatar The Last Airbender, but when Legend of Korra came out, I watched all four seasons. I tried my best to give it a shot. Tried. Yeah, as you can imagine, did not live up to my expectations. All right, this is it. That's it for part one. Join me and next episode as for part two of our steampunk. And then we'll be going to talk about the life of. Then we'll be going to talk about some ghost superstitions. I'm excited. It is a very important element in the gothic job. So let's keep that in mind. All right.